Don't want your kind here. Better round up someone else to help. Chet, Lesh, back off. I'll teach this vagrant a lesson. Man on freak. There is a war going on, and a witcher isn't really supposed to take sides in something like this. But, you know, the Nilfgaards are the ones that are invading. So they kind of get sort of the bad reputation in this story, being the invaders. But they have the information that we need, so, well, we gotta go work with them, don't we? Military camp. No locals allowed without the express consent of the garrison commander. I look like a local to you. You look like trouble. Dead wrong. I make trouble go away. I'm a witcher. A witcher? Captain Peter Sagwin Levy is in the tower. Turn right, past the gate. Guessing your captain's got work for me. This is the army, Nordling. There is no guessing. To the tower. Go. How much grain will your village give? Whatever you say, Your Excellency. Look at my hands. Look. See the calluses? These are not the hands of an Excellency, but of a farmer. So we speak peasant to peasant. How much can you give? Forty bushels. There'd be more, sir, but our lads, the Temerians, that is, took from us earlier and... You will give thirty, and that will do. Let us settle on it, and I wish to see the transport soon. Oh. Thank you, sir. Thank you kindly. I summoned only the Elderman and the Smith, Willis. But it is said he is a dwarf. You are too tall to be him. Very perceptive of you. Geralt of Rivia, Witcher. A Vatgarn. This explains why I did not hear your footsteps. What do you seek here? Yennefer of Vengerberg. Where was she headed? That is a military secret. Haven't thrown me out yet. Haven't called the guards. So go ahead. What's your price? There is a griffin in the area. Slay it. And then I shall see what I can do. Why do you care about this griffin? Because I care about people. The beast has killed ten already including a few of my men. To hunt it, I would need to mobilize the entire garrison, comb the woods, organize a batu. Simply impossible. Too big a hassle? No. Too high a risk. I cannot disperse my forces. Demeria's army we have crushed, but its common folk remain, ready to answer a call to arms. So, as to this griffin, I can sit on my hands, or hire a professional. It's a deal. Some questions before I start. Know where the griffin has its lair? It kept to the vulpine woods at first. I sent a patrol there, five young men. A hunter found them two days on. They only recognized them because they wore our plate. Since then, the griffin has grown bold. Attacks in villages, fields, on the main road. Meaning it's abandoned its lair. Gonna have to set a trap. I judge from your tone this will not be easy. What do you require? I'll need bait. A specific herb. Buckthorn. Scent should lure the griffin from ten miles off. Buck... Buckthorn? I do not know this. But I am not yet fluent in the common tongue. Mm -hmm. Probably mastered the basics, though. Hands up. Kill them. No. First came idioms. Don't play with fire, for example. Go to Tomira, an herbalist. She lives near the crossroads. She will aid you. Need more information about this griffin. Its sex. Why it's abandoned its lair. Shall I bring you witnesses? They won't say anything I don't already know. I need to go where your men died. Look around. 
What's the name of the hunter who found them? Mislov. He has a hut south of the village, very near the wood. Helpful fellow. A little strange, though. Tamira and Mislav. Thanks. Es soon the actin. The easy way out would be to just take a character like that and have him be some sort of just unmitigated monster. That's kind of the easy way to go, and it's kind of the lazy way to go. In fact, there really isn't anything wrong with doing something like that, now that I think about it. You sort of do need to have pure antagonists, people who, who would come across as just irredeemably evil, or at least in the perception that you'd have playing the game, reading the story, watching the movie, whatever. They seem to have gone with a little bit of a different route with this. And he, at least on the surface, seems to be a little bit more sympathetic towards the people that he, um, that he's put in charge over. Now, he's just part of an invading army, and they've moved into this area, and now they're in the process of requisitioning things from the people living around there, farmers for food and all that kind of stuff. Now, that makes sense. That's something that armies would actually do. Hey there. And... Well, you could look at it as sort of a carrot-in-the-stick kind of situation. They could run in here and just sort of bully everybody around and steal everything that they needed or they, everything that they wanted. But this is an invading army. They're trying to take over these territories. And if they're going to become the rulers of this land, you can't really have everybody just hating you so much. I mean, invading their land was enough. But now, going around and bullying everybody around, so this guy's taking a bit of a gentler hand when it comes to dealing with the local populace. Plus, he's also, he is getting what he wants, and he's coming across as more sympathetic. So, I guess it's a win-win on his end, huh? Come on. There are a lot of instances of using your Witcher senses to find clues, leading you in the direction where you need Trails to go. Trails fresh. Ms. Love just left home. It does get kind of annoying. But we'll do it here. I mean, kind of have to, don't we? He's right up here. He's making a lot of noise. Oh, he's fighting a bear. Oh, oh, yep, he fucked that thing up. You, Ms. Love. Shh. Hear that? Wolves? No. Wild dogs. Yes. More dangerous than wolves. Dogs more dangerous than wolves? Don't think so. It's the truth. Know why? No, but I guess you're about to tell me. Wolves hunt to fill their bellies. Wild dogs kill for sport. Just like humans. Aye. They've learned much from us. Why not cruelty too? I'm hunting bigger game. The Nilfgaardians the Griffin killed. Where'd you find them? Ah, I see. You a witcher. That monster slayer they's talking about in the village. Mm -hmm. I'll show you, sure. But, uh, I gotta kill those mutts before they hurt someone. Will you help? That is, if you don't mind blunting your silver blades on them? Sure. Griffin's not going anywhere. No. Dogs might, though. So step careful now. Come on. These dogs been a problem for a while now? Since the war started. Soldier on the march. He'll stop the rape a woman, strangle her, kill her man for a chuckle, even butcher a cow. And a dog, a 
kick in passing, no more. So we strain mutts for packs. They're gaunt, guts stuck to their skin. Too late. Attacked another one. There are, of course, a lot of add-on effects to having a war like this. An army goes in, kills a bunch of people, beats the people up, either drives them out of their home or kills them, burns crops, all that kind of stuff. That's the primary effect of the war. This guy's implying that all of those people leaving, leaving the dogs homeless, they've all gone feral. And that's a problem in and of itself, and I guess that makes sense. Although I still wouldn't think that they're more dangerous than wolves, other than potentially a lack of fear of humans. That would make sense, I guess. Dieter. You know him? We served at the Lord's Manor together, where the Black Army's in camp now. He was a stable hand, I was the Lord's hunter. But that was before... Well, a long time ago. Sorry. Hope you weren't close. No. Not at all. So, can you show me where you found the Milf Guardians? Griffin, know anything about it? Oh, not much. Not my kind of game. You're his kind, though. Survival instincts alone ought to make you care. I walk silent through the woods. No Griffin can hear me nor spy me. I didn't choose the necessary conversation options, but had I gone and pursued that through, I would have found out that this guy is gay, and that has something to do with the reason why he was sort of excommunicated. And the guy, the, the body that we found, was the person who found him out and told everybody. So I imagine there's some bad blood there, but it doesn't mean he still can't feel sympathy over the man's death. Twas here. One lay there, by the stump, headless. The other hung from a branch, guts splayed, stretching down to... Watch out for yourself now. I'll be fine. Not the first griffin I've dealt with. Not likely to be the last, either. Hope you're right. Good hunting now. Elf Guardians were celebrating. Griffin interrupted them. Grounds black, saturated with blood. In all honesty, a camp. if I were designing this game, I would avoid having more than one of these search for the clue things inside of any one particular mission. This is our second one. These prints are older and deeper, heavily armored. Elf Guardians, probably. There's only so long you can have a mechanic like this before it starts to wear on the player. They're like, ah, damn, I gotta do this shit again. It can get irritating. We're still in the beginning of the game. See it a whole lot more. <laughs> Feels like this section of the map was made specifically for this... Uh, Griffin's nest. What remains of it, at least. Bones. Horse. Dog. Human. A few months' worth. Female. Larvae and her wounds have already hatched. Been dead at least a week. Other Griffin must be a male. Deep cuts over the whole body. Not a drop of blood on the beak or claws. Didn't defend herself. Crept up on her while she slept. Beak tips worn. Gray hairs in the coat. Ten, twelve years old. Griffins pair off for life when young. Male must be about the same age. Thick shaft. Dense barbs. A royal griffin. Explains why the male I ran into was so aggressive. Hunted the Nelf Guardians down here in the forest first, then started prowling the area. Done all I could. Should talk to Vesemir.
even if his justification for being kinder to the locals is more self-serving than anything, I have no reason to doubt that the garrison commander's justification for wanting the griffin dead is not entirely genuine. It is killing people and he wants that to come to an end, even if it is just because it's killing his own soldiers. So he would have wanted this thing killed, and clearly he sent these people to go and kill it. But as it's becoming ever more clear to us that if you want monsters dead... Corpse is a couple of weeks old. Still alive when the griffin brought him here. Took a long time dying. A witcher is really what you need to hire in order to get it done. Not only are they faster and stronger and heal better and all that kind of stuff normal humans, they also have better and more comprehensive knowledge about what they're dealing with. And as we've seen it in the very beginning, that knowledge is very Magic. important. A place of power. But here we have another example of the invading army going in and causing trouble, even if it's something that they didn't intend to do. The Nilfgaardians didn't intend to cause the feral dogs to go and run through the woods attacking people. They also didn't intend to cause the griffin to go in insane and start attacking people, but, well... Faster. What they did still made that happen. And we're sitting around, instead of actually fighting the enemy in this area, fighting the... Oh, there's a ghost in there. <laughs> instead of... We'll get back to this later. Normally in these kinds of stories, you would be the hero that goes and takes on the invading army. We don't do that here. It's a different kind of story. Geralt is, maybe he's not impartial to what's going on here, but it's not really his problem and he's not going to go out of his way to solve it. Although he will do what he has to do in the area, take jobs involving the monsters and problems that the area has. Here we have a treasure spot, or whatever the hell it's called. We have a bunch of drowners, which I believe are necrophages. We can use the this oil to hurt them. You kill them, and you get their stuff. Not just stuff off you loot off their bodies, but actual, like, there's a gear or stash here of nice stuff that we want. One left. Huh. can loot their bodies just for pieces of monsters, which are useful for things, but this treasure chest out here is what we're really after. A lot of nice stuff. But there is more. My lieutenant demanded we defecate on command. Ballista bolts landing all around, and all he could say was, A soldier with a full stomach will not step onto the battlefield. Now shit, that is an order. Can you believe it? The cretin. Stop! Oh, you're, oh, you're killing me. My, my ribs. Oh, it hurts to laugh. That needs a tourniquet. But first, want to explain what's going on here? We... we fought in that battle. Huge it was, you heard. They had me killing in Tamaria's name, and roasting in Nilfgaard's. Ordered to slay each other. We decided to run away. Listen, I can't walk, and roasting their lang for desertion if he happens on any of his own. Would you find my brother? Tell him I'm alive. His name's Dune. He might have a dog with him, Usar. Please. We'll die if we don't help us. See what I can do. Before I end the episode, we're just going to wrap up this little side quest here. These two soldiers were... One was Tamari and the other was Nilfgaardian. But they're both supposed to be opposite sides of the conflict. Now, 
I'd say that just because somebody's in an army doesn't mean that they either agree with the politics of what that army is doing or even it might have even been not even been optional they may have been conscripted so got these two guys their job was to kill each other because they're on opposite sides of the army they both decide to essentially I guess I mean they didn't really defect neither one joined the other side they're more or less just running away from the battle sort of just going AWOL SSR? Yes. What is it? I found Bastion. He survived the battle. Hid in a ruined hut in the forest near the battlefield. I can't believe it. I was sure I'd never see him again. Gods be praised. Yeah, elf guardians too. Or at least one of them. Farewell. Stop whimpering, Hussar. I'll look for Bastion later, once it's safe. What now, you piece of filth? 